Okay, so let's start with 2024. Let's talk yeah. about the initiatives that we're excited about as far as business development goes. Sure. Yeah, you know, the, the top three industries, you know, really for us, uh, the last really five to ten years, oil and gas continues uh, to thrive inside the state of Oklahoma, which, which is great. You know, the gross production tax does a ton for the state of Oklahoma, uh, particularly when it comes to education. Uh, and making sure that, oh, that down at 23rd and Lincoln, we have budgets. Uh, we have a budget needed uh, to make sure that we have appropriate budgets uh, in all of our state agencies. So oil and gas, uh, the innovation that we're seeing in the oil and gas industry is very strong. Uh, hydrogen play into the future, I think, will also be something uh, that uh, will, will, uh, could, could create a bunch of jobs inside the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and, you know, listen, you know, Oklahoma is a renewable state now. Uh, wind. Uh, solar, uh, and again, the hydrogen play into the future is going to be a big deal. I, I, then I would say aerospace and aviation. Um, it's the number two industry in the state of Oklahoma today is aerospace and aviation. Uh, Oklahoma, inside our high schools, we're offering more aviation curriculum than any other state in the country. So th that, that's a good list to be on uh, with as many pilots as we need in this country and around the world today. So I firmly believe that aviation and aerospace and defense industry jobs over the next decade are going to grow exponentially inside the state of Oklahoma. I feel like the last time I was at Tulsa International for one of those pilot days or to get high schoolers into aviation, That's right. I talked to probably 10 high school teachers from different places around green country and no idea that freshmen in high school could do aviation classes. It, it's right. I mean, it, it really, and those are all the jobs that states want. You yeah. know, states want, you know, these great engineering jobs, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. Uh, we have all of the, uh, the um, military bases around the state of Oklahoma that we've protected over many decades. And because we have all of these military bases still, we have a lot of defense industry jobs inside the state. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, obviously the largest maintenance repair facility in the world, American Airlines, right here in the city of Tulsa. So aerospace and aviation is a big deal for the state of Oklahoma. It's a big deal to uh, our lieutenant governor's office. And speaking of engineers, computer engineers, computer science, you're going to, Hull Burton changing their name. I mean, that's, right. that's a big thing in Tulsa and in Oklahoma. Where do you see that kind of falling in with the, the need for those tech jobs in the tech industry in Oklahoma? Yeah, I mean, Tulsa's leading the way when, when it comes to tech uh, with, with the federally recognized tech hub that we have inside the city of Tulsa. There, there was, hasn't been a, a big more important announcement really for the state of Oklahoma, I could argue, than that federal recognition of a tech hub uh, going to create a whole lot of new businesses. I mean, the entrepreneurs that are going to be able uh, to, to thrive and grow right here in the city of Tulsa, you know, we're looking for the companies that we're going to be able to grow here that turns into the next Fortune 100 company. Uh, not just recruiting companies to the city of Tulsa or to the state of Oklahoma, but let's grow our own. Let, let, let's create entrepreneurs here uh, that are going to create the next Fortune 100 company. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about the SITES program and kind of what the objective of that program is. It actually just kind of detailed exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean, the SITES program is a, is a big deal, particularly for rural Oklahoma. So we have all of these industrial parks around the state. Mid-America up in Pryor is the one that most people talk about because it's one of the largest industrial parks in the entire country. But we have hundreds of, of industrial parks across the state that just need a little bit of help. They need, a, they need an investment so that they are shovel ready when companies come calling. Uh, and so we're going to be, we have invested hundreds of millions of dollars already, uh, and we're going to be doing another, uh, in, uh, an, another investment of dollars into our sites program next legislative session to invest money into these industrial parks. It could be renovating a building, it could be extending a runway, uh, it, it, horizontal work, you know, plumbing, electric work, those things matter when companies come calling so that a property is prepped and ready. Uh, and it's ready for, for jobs uh, to be created, in particular in rural parts of our state. I think it's incredible. It's seven, $780 million for that, right? Uh, I, it, it is, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a real investment. You yeah. know, you know, we, the, the state of Oklahoma, uh, with the federal dollars that are flowing into every state, states have to make investments in themselves. Uh, the, the cities uh, that you see are growing and are creating great quality of life, they're investing in themselves. And, and, and taxpayers understand that that investment uh, is going to provide jobs for their kids and grandkids and grow the city. 
So speaking of, uh, of growth and, and jumping back to the Fortune 100 companies and, and attracting companies, you're the guy that you sit down with people or executives who are looking to move to Oklahoma or start a business in Oklahoma, and you take them around. I think you do the hunting trips. Is we that do. Right? We what do. are the big things, though, that maybe the top few that you say, this is why you need to come and do business in Oklahoma? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the more attractive things that we talk about is just logistically. Oklahoma is where east meets west. We're, we're right in the middle of the country. Uh, so, you know, global companies looking to move product around the country and around the world, there is not a better place uh, to live and to create jobs, to have a business in the state of Oklahoma. And, and, and with our port system as well, uh, we have one of the most inland ports in America, uh, right there at the Port of Catoosa. It's another big driver for us, particularly in Northeast Oklahoma when it comes to job creation. Uh, I would say quality of life as well. You know, the commute times in Oklahoma are much different than they are in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area. That's a big deal uh, for, for young families uh, that really have opportunities to live anywhere they want, particularly if they're working remotely. You know, to be stuck in a car for an hour and a half, two hours in the morning and in the evening, that is not a good quality of life for young families. And so we're really making a play right now uh, for young families uh, around the country, but in particular down in uh, the Dallas Metroplex area that, hey, listen, the quality of life in Oklahoma is as good. We have, we have all, the, all the things now inside the state of Oklahoma when it comes to restaurants and nightlife, uh, obviously professional sports teams, uh, and we have half the commute time, uh, and you can actually afford a house uh, inside the state of Oklahoma as well. So that affordability is a big deal for companies as well. So speaking of companies who, who want to come here and then decide not to multiple times, is that when people think, well, we're not going to get big companies like, you know, a certain battery manufacturer sure. who wants to not decide to come here, does that make your job harder when talking to executives or is this, I mean, I know there's a lot, TIF districts are involved yeah. in that too, but how do you kind of jump over well, that? I, I mean, it makes my job a whole lot easier when it's Oklahoma and one other city or one other country competing for a mega project. You know, because 10 years ago, Oklahoma was not in those rooms. We, we, I wasn't sitting across from a CEO that was said, hey, listen, it's you or Dallas. It's you or Canada. Uh, today, those are the conversations that we are having. So we're not going to win every deal, but I guarantee you we're going to win some deals. And, and I just want to be in the room. I want to be in the final two. Uh, it's a whole lot better than not being in those rooms. Uh, and so, yes, we will win some mega projects, but there also will be some states that offer more money, uh, bigger incentives. They throw the whole kitchen sink. Sometimes we wanna be more strategic with the dollars that we have in Oklahoma, uh, in particular, helping existing businesses in the states grow. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of both. I mean, it'll be parallel tracks. We will talk to companies, big mega projects. Uh, we're talking to a number of mega projects today, uh, but we're gonna make sure that we're dedicated to those existing businesses inside the state of Oklahoma that are gonna create more, in, I mean, potentially going to be creating more jobs uh, than a mega project would uh, over a 10 year period. You know, you're talking about affordability and you're talking about selling points. The film industry in Oklahoma, oh, yeah, it yeah. has just taken off. And I mean, it, you were hard pressed, you know, 10 years ago to go around and people know where Oklahoma is yeah. or what Tulsa was. Now it seems that, you know, finally on a national, international stage is Oklahoma, and the affordability here for film projects to come here. What do you see the future for this state when it comes to film? Yeah, the film and, and television industry is bright, very bright for the state of Oklahoma. There's only a few other states in the country that, that really compete in this space uh, like Oklahoma does. You know, we have 12 different ecosystems. Uh, and, and, and the advantage that we have too when it comes to our film and television is our sovereign nations. You know, the Cherokee Nation right here in the Tulsa area uh, with the Cherokee Film Institute uh, that they are creating as well. That, that's an advantage that we have that really no other state has. So an incentive that the Cherokee Nation can offer a film or television production, and then you can layer that on top of the state's rebate, that's very, very competitive, uh, more competitive than, than really any other state in the country. So our film rebate program uh, is competitive. You layer, again, you layer on top of that our sovereign nations, in particular the Cherokee Nation, that's really leading the way uh, when it comes to sovereigns around the country in this film and television space. The sky's the limit uh, for more film and television production inside the state, which, which changes the perception that people have of a city or a state almost immediately. Uh, what Killers of the Flower Moon has done for the state of Oklahoma, that really put us even further on the map when it comes to a beautiful place 
uh, in, in a pro-business place to film a movie, uh, it is opening up a whole lot of doors for us uh, in Hollywood and in Atlanta, Georgia, which has really become the new Hollywood. And, and films always create a lot of tourism. Fairfax, I mean, seeing a, a big right. boost. Right. Yeah. You're the tourism guy as well. Yeah. How, do, how does that play into you convincing people from out of state to, to come visit? Yeah, I mean, tourism is the front door to economic development. You know, tourism is... People come Route 66 or, or maybe be a, 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 a television show or a movie and they fill up a hotel room, uh, they buy a lot of food, they, they, they shop, they, they create sales tax revenue for our city. Uh, we live or die on sales tax revenue as a state. We're very sales tax dependent. Uh, that pays for police and fire departments in every city across the state of Oklahoma. So it's a really big deal to be creating those tourism dollars. I don't care if it's a softball tournament or a movie. Uh, if we are creating sales tax off of a tourism industry, it's good for every city and every uh, uh, across the state of Oklahoma. You know, Killers of the Flower Moon is really highlighting you know, our arts and our culture here. Um, and how, how do you hope that Oklahoma is able to showcase this even more? Because before, you know, people didn't really know what Oklahoma was, red dirt, you know. Yeah. And now we're finally showing, like, what a diverse community Oklahoma is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the arts and that diversity that we have as a city in, in the Tulsa area across the state of Oklahoma is very important to the next generation that's looking for a city and an estate to live in. You know, so when, when it's why the Tulsa Remote Program works so well, because they understand if they can just get somebody to the city of Tulsa, we sell really well. Uh, from Gathering Place to the Philbrook to our art scenes, obviously to the amazing restaurants that we have, great public schools that we have here. Because of uh, showing that off, we can get people to stay here. But you got to show it to them. You got to get people here first for them to see how great of a state Oklahoma is. And that is why, again, our tourism industry uh, is such a, an advantage that we have. It's such a great tool in our toolbox to create all the rest of the economic development that we want. And Golden Globe, Best Actress, yeah. uh, Kills with Flower Moon. What have you heard about that? And is there still a lot of buzz in, in your circles in, in terms of, of government about that and what might come next? Yeah, I mean, cinematic history is what yeah. it was. I mean, the, the first uh, Native American uh, Best Actress in a Golden, a Golden Globe drama, uh, Lily Gladstone. Uh, and we firmly believe there is uh, very big announcements to come at the Oscars uh, mm -hmm. for Lily as well, which will also be cinematic history. So uh, it, again, it, it is, we're very proud uh, that the movie was uh, was filmed entirely in inside the state of Oklahoma. It's an Oklahoma story. We wanted that to be filmed here, uh, and there was a lot of negotiation to make that happen a number of years ago. We're glad we did because we believe it is the the beginning uh, of a very bright future for film and television and more Native American storylines uh, that are going to be told uh, on screens. And again, that's great for uh, the the state of Oklahoma. Uh, more people seeing Oklahoma means more people that are going to show up here, spend money here, and yes, potentially move to the state of Oklahoma as well. I think, what is it, Echo? Echo on, uh, yeah. yeah That's Marvel. right, yeah. yeah. It looks intense. I didn't even know about it until this morning. Until this morning yeah. Really yeah. yeah. Also, again, big deal right, right there on Hulu and, uh, yeah. and Disney. Disney yeah. Plus. I got, one, I got one more for I want to jump back to the dirt and, uh, you know, <laughs> talking about tourism dollars. We got Chili Bowl going on right now. Yeah. Big events like that. People travel. I mean, NASCAR legends coming here yeah. uh, to race in it. How, how big are these kind of events, not, not just racing, but just in, in Tulsa, good for the state of Oklahoma? Oh, I mean, listen, events, again, whether it's the Chili Bowl or a, or a you know, horse show that we have here in the city of Tulsa, again, critical sales tax dollars that are being uh, created inside the city that stay here. You know, these are people that out-of-state folks that are coming into the city of Tulsa, they drop their sales tax dollars, and then they go home. We, we love that kind of money. But again, it showcases... Uh, Tulsa uh, to the world. Uh, you have people from all over the country uh, that come into town for the Chili Bowl uh, that see how great Tulsa is, see how friendly it is, see how affordable it is. They get back in their trucks when they drive back home and they're talking to their spouse on the way home saying we need to move to the city of Tulsa. Uh, we hear those stories all the time and, and Oklahoma is a top 10 state in net migration uh, over the last year. We're a top 10 state of people moving to uh, the state of Oklahoma. That's a really big deal. Uh, more people moved uh, net net. We more people moved to Oklahoma from Texas than Oklahomans moving to Texas uh, over the last year as well. Uh, so we attracted more people from Texas than Oklahomans going to Texas. 
Uh, so we're, we know we're on to something as a state. And, and then migration to the middle of the country that is happening, it's real. In Oklahoma, we have to be ready for that kind of movement. Uh, people moving from the coast into the middle of the country, they're looking at Oklahoma uh, potentially for the first time in a really long time. And we've got to be ready for it when they come calling.